Hey everyone, this is Michael Cohen, the Tech Rabbi, and welcome to another tech tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about Adobe Spark Video. But first I want you to check out my tutorial on Adobe Spark Post, which is an amazing app to create incredible and beautiful graphic posters, images that can be used in, as you see here, so many different ways. Welcome messages, student intros, etc, etc. There are so many ways in which this application can do some incredible things. Today we're going to talk about the Adobe Spark Video counterpart of the Adobe Spark Suite. And in this platform that's focused on video, you can document science processes, math concepts, historical events, as you can see here, parts of speech, storytelling, how-to videos. The possibilities are almost endless, and I love the simplicity of these applications that you'll be able to get your students in your classroom, even first, second, third graders, mastering this application in 20 minutes or less, and then you get to focus on what's important in the classroom, which is content, the message. How can we use these mediums, these tools, to convey students' understanding of information and let them present their skills and abilities, but in a personal and creative way. So we're going to dig deep into how this application is used to create content, and I'm going to give you an example of a topic that you could use in your classroom, but definitely want to get your creative juices flowing. So. The way that you enter into this application, you get into spark.adobe.com, you log in. On the web interface, you have a blue plus sign that you press, and it's going to let you pick from a couple different options. And if I went back to the platform here, you'll see that plus sign, post, page, and video. Video is red, and you enter this scene here. You don't have to title your story right now. You can skip that. The reason I wanted to show you this is because they have mastered the art of guided storytelling process. They let you pick a story template, and they will guide you depending on the type of theme that you choose. So you see here, promote an idea as you move through. And in the case of what I created as an example, it is teach a lesson. So you pick that one and you then enter into the Adobe Spark video platform where you get to start editing. So right away you see here top right corner you have your layout which lets you choose from full screen, split screen, caption, and then title and text. All of those allowing for a couple different types of content to be populated in the design. There is a theme couple that you get to choose from and it has the music already set there, it has the transitions, it has the color and the design etc. You can then resize it because Square Video is a dominating force thanks to Instagram, Square is now an option. And then music and you can adjust the level of that background music and then you can pick from a bunch of really great tracks that are going to give a little bit of energy to the content that you are sharing. So over here I added this as an extra slide, I don't actually need it so I hit those three white dots in the gray circle and I can either duplicate the slide, I can play my video starting at this slide or I can delete it. Yes, delete this slide. So you start here and there's a couple of, of, um, of items that you need to know about as you are recording, especially on the browser version which is compatible with Chromebook, MacBook, and Windows PCs. And that is that when you hold down on this recording graphic, you have to be aware of the intro time and the outro time. And so you want to let it get to one second before you start talking, and you want to leave one or two seconds of buffering at the end when you're kind of silent. And I know in a loud classroom that can be a little stressful, picking up external audio but what I found is that if I don't let it go for a couple seconds, it actually cuts off the end of my sentence, that the, those last couple words, because when I, I because I let go of the record button. Now you have to hold that record button the whole time. So the way that this process works is you add your content, and you'll see uh, this video is going to play at the end of this video. So definitely keep watching and watch that video example at the end. 
But as I go here, and let's say I want to add an additional slide, right? So I added a slide here, and it actually brought it right before the slide that I had selected. So over here, I click on the slide, and I have my video function that I can add a video in. And there's certain types of video files that don't work, and it takes a little bit of getting used to because a lot of the times there is this default video setting for some of the different applications. So you just have to make sure that you're pulling up the right videos because if it's an MP4, let's say, and you choose that, it says, uh-oh, unsupported video file. Video Spark video is unable to use this video file. Please convert it to a known format and try again. And you actually can click there. And it says most video files in MP4, MOV or M4B, M4V are the proper uh, style. You might have to use the Adobe Media Encoder. That can get a little complicated. So what I found is that videos that are created on your iOS device are really great, but it just takes a little bit of getting used to as you start working through that process. Okay, but the truth is I rarely put video up. What I actually love to do, besides for photo, of course, and text is I love the icon library. And I actually created in this tutorial a story about the water cycle where I broke down each part of the water cycle and I chose icons that represented what I was going to say. And the reason that this is so powerful is that you're actually teaching your students how to leverage imagery to visually communicate an idea. And for those that know the work that I do, I am super into Dr. Richard Mayer at UCSB, who is a master of multimedia learning theory. And his whole theory is based on my verbal communication, like I'm doing right now, balanced with visuals, is going to be a stronger method of communication and something that's going to be more memorable. Imagine if this was a podcast and I was verbally guiding you through the Adobe Spark video platform and telling you to click here, go here, look at this feature, and you had to then visualize it in your head. For most people, that is much more complicated and a bigger challenge. So I add my icons, I add my split screen, I hit that record button, and that is literally all there is to it. It adds automatic um, credits at the end that gives credit to all of the designers that created the icons or the photos if you pulled from the uh, Adobe Photo Library, and then you could add your own credits if you took imagery that was off of Google that needs to have credit given to its author. And then you're ready to go. And you literally download it or share it, and that is all there is to it. I know you're surprised, you're like, wait a second, isn't this really complicated? Add your icons, add your photos if the students did hand drawings, and just narrate the story. So what else is there? Well. There is a planning process, and I can tell you for myself, I am a professional speaker. I speak all over the country, all over the world, and I am very confident. Right now, I have no script, and I have built out mentally in my mind the strategy of how I'm going to introduce this content and share it with you. Not everybody has that skill, or not everybody has refined that skill to the degree that they'd be confident to record, and the truth is I made a number of retakes on the water cycle video that I created. Students are going to need that skill set, and so there's two pieces, one that's built into Adobe Spark, and the other one that is really just about how you help students plan and organize any sort of process in which they're communicating an idea, and that is script writing. Whether it's bullet points or literally a paragraph they're going to read, they need to have that content there so that they communicate clearly, concisely, and allow for that personal touch that doesn't result in um, uh, awkward pauses and 10,000 retakes. The other thing about Adobe Spark video is when I hold down this record button right here, it tells me, I thought I already allowed this, one second, two second, and once I get to 10 seconds, it actually tells me, and I'm going to wait for it to pop up, 9, 10, keep it short. And it actually limits it to, I think, around 26 seconds. It won't let you record longer than that. You need to teach your students to break up the content 
30 seconds, I stand corrected, to break up the content into small components so that they will be able to streamline that process of much more successful recording. After 30 seconds, it says to record a longer than 30 second, duplicate the slide and continue your recording on the next slide. And really, you could have 55 slides and each one of those is 10 seconds, but it's really trying to challenge the students to keep it short. Most of the time I go over 10 seconds, but I'm definitely trying to keep it under 20 seconds for sure, because I want my conversation to be media rich and actually have multiple icons to help tell the story in a visually appealing and engaging way. So that's today's tutorial. Definitely check out Spark Video. This app downloads onto the desktop. It downloads onto your iOS device. No word yet on an Android version, but iOS, and you can actually get these videos onto Flipgrid, you can upload them to YouTube, you can upload them to Google Drive and play them in the Google Drive YouTube player so that it keeps it off of social media for those schools that don't have access to YouTube, and you're good to go. So thanks for watching, please subscribe to my channel, please share this out, and if you found this valuable, please share a comment and your thoughts, and definitely share the work that you're using Adobe Spark in your classroom with me because I love seeing students empowered with this powerful software. Thanks so much for watching. In this video, we're gonna learn all about the water cycle, the various stages, and your role in the water cycle today. This illustration here is a very classic version of the water cycle created by the United States Geological Service. Today, we're gonna to take a deep dive into the various parts of this cycle, so let's get going. Since the water cycle is in fact a cycle, there's not a real beginning or an end, but since most of the world's water is found in the ocean, that is where we're gonna start. In the ocean, the sun heats up the water, causing the water to evaporate and condense up in the air. Up in the air, that condensation that evaporated turns into clouds, and lots of them. And the winds blow them all over the world, starting the precipitation process, which we know as rain. But not all precipitation falls as rain. Some of it falls as snow in mountain regions known as snowpack. And in warmer climates during the springtime, that snow melts and creates something called surface runoff. That surface runoff can turn into rivers, and a lot of the times it actually flows all the way back to the ocean which causes a problem in the water cycle where the water isn't absorbed into the ground and stored there. In a healthy water cycle, there is water that is absorbed into the ground. That process is called infiltration. Infiltration creates what are called aquifers, which are underground reservoirs, and those can be accessed by digging down and creating what's called a well. In areas that are prone to drought, there are many ways in which you can help collect water and conserve it. Some people actually create water barrels that collect the water that falls onto the roof and around the house. There are many other ways in which you can start to conserve and collect water, and you should ask your teacher today. And then we make our way back to the ocean to start the water cycle all over again. The sun heats up the water, it evaporates, and it keeps on going. Thanks so much for watching this video about the water cycle.